Good morning, everybody. It's Dave and Bo. Welcome to episode 105, better known as season three, episode one of This Week in the Garden. We are in beautiful Southern California. It is clear skies. It's going to be 80 degrees today, which is super hot for December the 6th, 2024. You will all be seeing this on the 7th. And I'm going to walk around the garden, show you what's been going on this past week, and I'm going to share some really cool things with you also at the end of the video. Uh, let's go ahead and cruise through the Rose Garden since we're out there closest to us. Ah. Over here, um, let's walk through the entranceway. We'll take this pathway here. Um, all the lettuce is doing really well. And one of the things too that's really weird is having to water the garden this time of year because normally we get some really cool, you know, rainstorms coming through just perfectly timed where we don't have to water for December or January. But really we have had to lately uh, just because it's been so dry. We haven't had any really rain to speak of this season. Uh, we have a few flowers of the chocolate cosmos still remaining. I'm going to be cutting that back pretty quickly. Uh, we've got some ajuga tucked in here and some of the dwarf hemlock. Most of the roses are going to be cut back pretty soon, but Again, I'm waiting for cooler weather. I don't want to cut them back when it's 80 degrees, um, even though this is prime time to do that. Uh, we do have a stray bearded iris here. Um, and that's kind of the reason I've been waiting for a lot of these is I don't want them to sunburn or for the canes to dry out, uh, anything like that. So I'm a little bit more hesitant. This week, normally I would have started December 1st, but I'm just going to wait a few more days. Allegedly, after this weekend, it's going to cool down. There's a beautiful duet flower still. Queen Elizabeth back there. And we can see a lot more of the plants because I did cut back the giant Leonotus that was here. I'm not done cutting this back yet by any means. Um, I'm going to cut it still about half the size you see it now because it just gets so crazily big. You know, we were looking at six feet by six feet uh, as far as height and actually length and width. It's a massive shrub um, that kind of was not pruned at all during last season. So hard pruning on it and that'll come back just fine. Don't even think that uh, it's going to not come back. Uh, the Pittosporum here looking beautiful. Uh, most of the leaves are now off of the cherry tree. The apricot tree we did prune last weekend. Got all those leaves cleaned off. Got a lot of the crossing branches cleared as well. And my goal, hopefully, is that this tree here and the cherry tree here will make kind of almost an arch as you go uh, into this back area here. If I didn't show you last week, and I'm pretty sure I did, but uh, prune the bay tree. We had one little bloom on Alina over here. Uh, she's a really beautiful rose. We did move it last year. It, she had gotten buried, so we dug her up. Um, raised the bud union, which is that not there to where it would be above the ground. Uh, did cut some roots off during that. So she wasn't as vigorous this year as she normally is, but I love the blooms on this particular rose because they show up particularly at night and in the moonlight. Uh, it just kind of has a really cool, almost glowing effect to them. And they're really one of my favorite flowers, kind of an ivory white with uh, a little bit of yellow toward the base. We also need to go ahead and cut back the false heather in white. And there's just a lot of maintenance to do. 
but we're out here almost every single day trying to clean up stuff. Um, it just kind of got away with the hot weather that we had in September and I do have a full-time, more than a full-time job uh, teaching. Sorry about the light there, because uh, I wanted to show you the Westringia and how beautiful that is. Uh, very similar to Rosemary as far as, uh, I think it's from the same family in fact, um, but as far as the flowers go uh, and the branches, um, nothing that I really, you know, no rosemary scent or anything like that. And since we're back here, that's the blood lily in the corner. The dogwood was the first tree that we pruned back a couple of weeks ago. And this is more of a, a shaded area back here because of the angle of the sun. We have taken more of the privet down and particularly over here at the end, uh, trying to make that going back more toward the fence line and topping it at a realistic level. You can still see some of the asparagus ferns that have grown up and are up there but that's in progress and another th thank you to my neighbor who lets me borrow the barrel to throw all that stuff in because our barrel gets uh, filled up every single week of debris uh, the Japanese maple blood good that's pretty well done uh, we can go ahead and really start pruning this and again it's in the shade so it's not going to be damaged at all by uh, any sun. The Chianthus tree, the Chinese fringe tree, same thing. All the leaves are pretty much gone now. Um, they've all yellowed. They're falling off. So we'll do just a very light pruning on this tree here. It's been in the ground about a year and a half. So we still have about a year and a half to go before it really kind of takes off. Um, but I'm really hoping that it will grow a lot more this year and that way it can kind of fill up and shade this area in the back. We've got the clivia. We've got a beautiful penguin pine from Mr. Maple. And that's exactly where that maple come, came from. Uh, Makawa Yetsubusa. I'll get that name right one of these weeks. In the back, I was a little worried we were losing the and I can't remember the name now. I know Ecuador is the variety. Heliotropium, um, just a beautiful flower, great fragrance to it, full on wilt this past week. And I actually just think it got a little bit too dry. The sprinkler just missed it, um, but it looks nice and full and it's recovered, but uh, I'm keeping an eye on it. I was just a little concerned because uh, we had it in the ground for a contain uh, in the container for a year uh, before planting and uh, it was very few uh, very little soil in the container. I want to go up here to the false Aurelia and point out I've never seen it bloom. Here's the bloom stock on it. So that's kind of cool. Um, we planted one of the ferns down here. We have another Japanese maple here with and that's variety is blood good that's been pruned elizabeth magnolia we pruned that last week over here besides my shadow so i'll move around here um, is the pomegranate pomegranate's almost all defoliated now i did take some branching out of it that was crossing. I'll top it as well so it stays underneath the fig tree. The fig tree also lost all of its leaves so I went ahead and cut that back. Um, the only things I'm not pruning are the roses which still have an abundance of leaves on it and so um, that's why some things are getting pruned in this hot weather and some are not um, because there's no leaves here anyway to protect the fig tree. So I just went ahead and cut all the branches back. Um, figs can be cut back very hard. They'll come back very vigorously. This one has never fruited. Um, it's actually a seedling 
and um, it actually seated right next to the house. There's a neighbor about two doors down that has a fig tree, so I'm sure it's from a bird that uh, visited this location, and it grew up with such a straight trunk. I'd never seen a fig tree with such a straight trunk on it, um, and so I planted it here because years ago, had neighbors I didn't really know, and uh, I was always worried about the fence falling over because it was in disrepair, and that's why it's there. It's kind of as a uh, fence post, so just in case the fence does fall over, it won't fall over all the way. Uh, speaking of that, more pruning on the ivy. It is amazing how much ivy there was on the fence and still continues to be. Uh, so that'll be over this next week. I'll take more of that out, uh, prune more of the back wall. Um, we've got the Japanese maple Shishigashira back here. We've also got some new lights. I planted some lights, uh, not planted, gosh, I installed some lights uh, just yesterday and they work fantastic. So they give the garden just a beautiful uh, lighting at night. So I've been really happy with them for all of 24 hours now. Uh, there's about a dozen of them around the yard. We've got the Amaryllis belladonna. Remember this is the uh, naked lady bulb. This is where it comes up with just the flower in the late summer, early fall, does its blooming, and then the foliage comes in the different time of the year. So it's just coming up now, that'll die back in May, and then there won't be anything until maybe August, September. We planted a um, succulent here. I can't remember if that's a Echeveria or a Sedum. We have a little bit of Shasta daisies and the Orange Dream Japanese maple back here. So I cleaned this area off as well last week uh, with Thanksgiving break, had a little bit extra time. Also pulled almost uh, just a ton of the lavender trumpet vine um, from the fence so that the possums would have no place to kind of congregate over the winter. Uh, luckily, we don't have any issues with uh, rats or mice. Uh, the cat takes care of that which is very wonderful. Um, but the lavender trumpet vine was getting a little bit too um, dense. And you can kind of see, in fact, we'll take you back here, kind of how dense and woody it does get underneath the main foliage. So all this will be cut back in the next couple of weeks. And that way it'll regrow for the spring and it won't be too like crazy, at least for a year or two. Uh, also prune back the juniper. Planted this one over here. Cut back the geranium. You can kind of see the lecosium coming up. Uh, Remulched this area too last weekend. So that is so exciting. That's why one of my favorite things is seeing the bulbs come up. I still have bulbs to plant from bluestone perennials. And speaking of bulbs, let's zip right back over here. That's the hemananthus, the normal one. So again, kind of a different flower, very easy to grow, very fun as well. Uh, plants back here. Of course, the hospital area is what we would call this at a nursery, but these are just plants waiting to go into the ground. Um, got a few roses still. We've got the variegated dogwood. Uh, over here is a stewardia. Dwarf lilac. Colocasia. The quince, that's gonna probably be planted next. Uh, so fewer plants, They're, they are making it out to the yard, um, but there's always so much work to do. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take you out to the front yard now and walk you through that. All right, so this is the front yard, which quite honestly uh, doesn't get as much 
tender care as the backyard it gets as far as plant material. Uh, a giant Cape honeysuckle, which has actually been pruned back dramatically over the past few years. Uh, that still needs to be pruned uh, again for the winter time. Over the fountain is a tree wisteria. Uh, it's just trained up as a tree rather than a multi-branched uh, vine. Uh, that is losing its leaves. That'll be pruned back pretty quickly. Heavenly bamboo. Some of the roses here that we got from Antique Rose Emporium. This one has just done phenomenal. And I do have the tag down here because I'm sure you want to know the variety. Some of the name has wiped off, but I should be able to put it in the description below the video. Uh, but this one has been a repeat bloomer just time and time again, really nice fragrance. Um, and just a wonderful, wonderful rose. Uh, Ligustrum, David Austin roses, and out in front, uh, a string or a row of icebergs. And again, just can't wait to cut those back, but it's just been too hot. And look at all the foliage that's still on them. It's just like, they're not ready yet to be cut back. Uh, against the house, uh, I wanna do just annuals underneath here, and then a few bearded iris. We have one of my favorite uh, plants. This is uh, the Tristus gladiolus, uh, and this is a gladiola flower, but it's uh, yellow, and it uh, is just a really incredible bloomer. Uh, naturalizes, come back, comes back and multiplies, as you can see year after year. Uh, this has been in the home landscape many, many, many years. We've got the flower bed here, still looking great. This is Raphaelepis or Pink Indian Hawthorn. Uh, pinky is the variety. Over here, we've got the cut back ficus tree. Started cutting back things in the front yard, was way overgrown uh, about two months ago, but things are looking a lot better now. A lot of the debris is gone. This is the Stephanotis vine. Stephanotis, um, you'll see it a lot on wedding bouquets. Uh, it is a June flowering plant and uh, very fragrant. One of the original plantings to the home is the camellia here. Fortnite lilies underneath. Gardenia, native ligustrum, and we've got the xylosma bush uh, last and this is also a plant that kind of stretched out a little bit too far it's just gotten away and so that's been pruned back uh, and still needs to be lowered as far as height goes and that was a gigantic uh, liquid amber tree that was cut back severely two years ago it's just now barely uh, rebranching out so we'll keep a little bit better eye on that so it doesn't get up 30 40 feet again so that is basically the front yard. And what I wanna do now is actually show you um, some pictures of my very first job uh, working at a garden center back in the 80s. I'm just gonna show you a few uh, pictures I found from that time. All right, hey everyone, it is Dave and I'm gonna take you on a tour back in time of a place I used to work at called Covina Garden Center. This is where I guess you could say the madness began. It was 1986. I started there on July the 5th, the day after 4th of July, and I worked there for about two years during high school before I got my first full-time job at Bamiko Nursery, which I will show you hopefully in the next couple of weeks. I'll do the same type of slide presentation. But this was the front of the nursery, and it was actually originally Alpha Beta Garden Center. And Alpha Beta was a grocery store we had here, at least in Southern California. I don't know if it was in other parts of the U.S. or not. But the two of the workers who worked at that garden center bought it, and one of them retired, and then I ended up working for the other one, Carl. And had a great time here, learned a whole bunch, 
and it was really a quite a wonderful experience. Also really kind of cool to see these old cars. We're going to head in right underneath the cover that you saw there and that's where we had our soils kind of further back there and then the pottery up front. If you went all the way to the back uh, in the middle of the screen that is another kind of lot area maybe 20 feet by 20 feet where we would do some roses growing those and also where we would have St. Augustine flats for plugging and also trellises and such. Now if you went through the main gate you would come into the patio area here. Uh, that was the checkout there right at the center of the screen with some citrus trees in front of it and the rest of the store where all the hard goods were we had a lot of hanging baskets here on the patio area. And then in the next slide, uh, that's just panning to the right of that sliding glass door. So we'd usually have a fountain or bird baths. While I don't see it in this image, and I'm not sure if it's hidden by some plants or they actually took it out, but there was a water fountain here, a drinking fountain, that was ice cold water. So it was a refrigerated drinking fountain. It was amazing and kind of one of the cool things that uh, was a benefit working there, especially in the summer. Looks like some beautiful Hoya plants uh, hanging in the background there, some pothos and also some staghorn ferns. If we looked behind us from that last slide, you would have the bedding plant area. And this here are all the six packs. Uh, we've got a variegated ficus off to the left hand corner. And this is where generally the annuals and perennials would be. Now that structure that you see off to the left, that was actually the entrance to Alpha Beta. It ended up being sold. Alpha Beta moved up the street a couple of blocks and this became a sporting goods store. So this was Chick's Sporting Goods while I was in high school. Today, this unfortunately, this structure does not exist at all. It is a car dealership. So over here now, we're taking a step back. You can still see the bedding plants at the very front of the nursery. But this is where more of the shade plants would be, the begonias, the impatiens, the flats of ivy. Uh, up on the wall, we had the rental units for if you were going to put uh, granulated fertilizer out. Uh, that first Scott's uh, machine is plastic. However, that second one that you see in the distance, that is metal. And I loved putting those together. I used to be able to remember the part numbers for those. I, and I could put them together in like 30 minutes. It was amazing and really I wish I had one today. Uh, you can also see some Mondo grass off to the left. There's some Campanula, um, some Kellogg's brand uh, Amend soil there in the small bags. If we did a 180 from where we were standing there looking at the front of the nursery, we're now looking more toward the back of the nursery. Again, the brick building would have been the grocery store or sporting goods store. Um, we do have some trellises up on the wall. That's a Creeping Charlie in the front screen off to the right. The azaleas on the table there, and I remember all the varieties such as Dorothy Gish and Formosa, uh, Duke de Rohan, and it kills me on the prices because when I go out and buy plants today, I expect them to be the same price. Most of the one gallon containers, and that's what you see on the table there off to the right, are $3.99. Azaleas were always more. They were a little bit more of a specialty crop. So those were $4.49, uh, occasionally $4.99. And, you know, today they're, gosh, probably $10.99, $11.99 when you go to some nurseries. There is a beautiful, if you can kind of see it, uh, hanging basket rabbit's foot fern there off to the left-hand side. And if you see my garden videos, and I'll walk you through the uh, Devalia, the rabbit's foot fern, uh, the one I have came from this nursery. So it's about 35 years old. So 
Um, just a really great plant. There looks like a staghorn uh, in the back right hand side. Looks like they're uh, repotting that. When you walk to the back of the nursery and cross over and you can look to the front of the nursery here and the distance there is kind of that front entryway. Um, off to the left would be all the shrub beds. I would be standing kind of where the trees would be and we didn't really sell a whole lot of trees and normally nurseries tend not to because it's tough to keep them in smaller containers. It's generally best to special order trees or go to a tree nursery. So we would mostly specialize in one gallon and five gallon containers and general shrubs off to the left. On the right hand side, that's where the uh, citrus trees would be. We did a tremendous amount of business in citrus. There are lemons, oranges, grapefruit, and here we are now back at the front of the nursery right underneath the main cover looking back out and we do um, have a couple cool ramps. This was not a very level nursery. It definitely um, had some contours to it. We'll say that. And uh, off to the right some more perennials, vegetables, uh, cactus section, off to the left ground cover and then the citrus back in the back. And I think this is the final picture I've got. This is the interior of the store, uh, kind of a lean-to ceiling there. And I'm standing at the very back of the store, again, kind of a, a ramp heading down into the main part. And it was great. I loved working here first thing in the morning because when you opened up the store, and I'm sure it was from the granulated fertilizers here or the, some type of chemical, there would be a specific smell that you would smell. Uh, and it was just kind of like, it's the nursery smell. Um, House plants off to the right, this is really a poor, poor image. Um, chemicals, weed killers, insect killers, uh, liquid fertilizers, granulated fertilizers off to the left. Uh, generally, sometimes we would even have a fountain or two on the inside of the store. Uh, you can see the bags hanging from the ceiling of all the different types of soil amendments that we sold. Again, something that has gone up in price tremendously. I always think of buying a bag of planter mix at $3.99 and it's like $13 today. It just amazes me. Uh, and then where you see that person standing up at the front of the nursery, that was the entrance way. And I just loved opening up the nursery uh, every Saturday and Sunday, first thing in the morning. We would uh, be open from, gosh, I think it was 8 o'clock to uh, 5 p.m. Uh, and it was a, just a terrific job to have during high school where I would work on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and of course holidays. And then a couple days after school as well, uh, during spring and, and uh, the warmer parts of the year. We did sell Christmas trees here as well. Um, and that's some really cool memories because I got to work pretty late. Uh, we worked until I think nine o'clock at night. And in front there was a Wendy's. And I remember loving to get the Wendy's uh, chili for dinner during that time. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my tour of Covina Garden Center. All right, and that is everything for this week. Thanks for joining me. I will see you next week with a new video.